Listen up, my friends, to this powerful message about the sin of sexual immorality. This sin is different than other sin. You don't handle this sin the same way we handle other sin. This sin is the one sin we are told to flee. We are not meant to battle this sin head on. And in this video, I will give you three encouraging ways we can overcome sexual sin. And stay to the end because if you struggle with sexual sin, I have a word that will lift you up and leave you full of hope, fully renewed in the Lord your God. Before we get into the message, please like the video and subscribe for more content. Share with someone that is struggling with sexual sin. I know there are many, as this is the most abundant sin I've seen people face in my personal walk with Christ. Sexual immorality, fornication, masturbation are all sins that the Bible says to flee. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. My friends, when we became born again, the Holy Spirit came to dwell inside of us. So what this means now is that our body is the temple for the Holy Spirit. Sinning against ourselves means that we are sinning against the Holy Spirit as well. Imagine how much this grieves the Holy Spirit. Analytics are a little bit outdated, but as of 2002, 77% of Americans had had sex by the age 20, and of that percent, 75% had had premarital sex. According to the data by the age of 44, 95% of people have had premarital sex. Now these analytics are pre-TikTok and all other forms of social media which are used by the devil to promote promiscuity and all sorts of fornication. So imagine how many people are struggling with sexual sin and masturbation in the year 2024. The porn industry generates between 15 billion and 97 billion a year. One out of five Google searches are for porn and this is even on your child's device. So what do these statistics mean? It means that the world has gone rampant with sin and the problem is much bigger than we give it credit for. You see, it isn't just a good time or a release of sorts. Each one of these dollars and people in these statistics represent a sinful action. Each time one of these instances occur is a time we were told to flee. We were never meant to battle or struggle with sexual sin to begin with. You see, Adam and Eve were created by God and walked around naked without any awareness to their nude bodies. It was after the serpent tricked Eve into eating the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge upon sharing it with Adam that they became aware of their naked bodies and felt shame. This one act alone is known as the fall, and it is where all of the sin came from that has been introduced into the world since. What does this mean for believers? What does this mean for non-believers? The answer is the same for both parties. Sexual sin sends you to hell and needs to be repented of. 1 Corinthians 6.20 do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. The act of sex is a gift and a blessing from God for married couples that isn't meant to be experienced without the bond of marriage. There are feelings and connections made between a man and a woman when they have sex that bonds them together spiritually. When you introduce these connections and bonds to someone that isn't your covenantal partner, soul ties are introduced. This opens the door to demonic oppression as well. Have you ever had sex with someone and after you split up you have this desire to continue sleeping with the same person, so you fall back into the pattern of breaking up and making up? This is called a soul tie and it is from the devil to keep you in bondage to sexual sin. Sex has been created for procreation as well as for a man and a woman to have pleasure in the love that they get from the marriage covenant. Now I want to give you some ways that you can overcome this sin that are practical and can be used in everyday life to overcome this desire. The first way to overcome this sin is to flee. If you find yourself in a situation of temptation, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 reads, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. We are not meant to struggle or wrestle with lust and sexual temptation. You don't fall into sex in one day, rather it builds up over the course of a few days of testing the waters. Maybe it's a flirtatious text today. 
maybe tomorrow it's an inappropriate touch. By the third day, it may be a nude photo in your inbox. On the fourth day, it's sexual conversations on the phone. And by the fifth day, it's live video of one another. And on the sixth day, you both cannot control yourself any longer that on the seventh day, you commit the sin. You see, it isn't a one-time occurrence. The sin usually happens much further in advance than the actual act itself. This is why Romans chapter 13 verse 14 says, But put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provisions for the flesh, to gratify its desires. When this type of behavior shows its face, immediately put it to rest. Do not entertain these types of behaviors or thoughts. You're supposed to take these thoughts captive immediately. If you give these thoughts a moment of your time, you can entertain them much more easily the second time around. And if you do it twice, it's easier to do it a third. The best thing to do, if you find yourself in a place where you struggle to control yourself, is to not put yourself in that position in the first place. Meet with your boyfriend or girlfriend in a public space with friends around, so it won't be such a challenge. Don't be alone late at night as your inhibitions are lower at this hour of the night. I was once told by a very wise man that, if you are going to hang out with your significant other, that you need to stay vertical. What does this mean? If you stay vertical, in an upright position your bodies do not find themselves close to one another. But when you lay horizontal, as in laying on the couch watching a movie together, you find your bodies close to one another, and this leads to sexual desire and lust for the other. Your chances of controlling yourself in a situation like this are much slimmer than they are if you are upright and not close to one another. Practice wisdom in your time that you hang out with one another and don't put yourself in a risky situation that you will most likely lose to. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5 read, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. Being set apart for God means we have to act in a different way. This doesn't mean that you won't struggle with sexual desire or addiction to porn or masturbation. This doesn't mean it's going to be easy to not have sex. But it does mean that the reward is great for those that do abstain and deny themselves the instant gratification of self-pleasure. The second way to overcome sexual sin is to remember that God is watching. The Holy Spirit dwells inside you. Know that God knows and sees all that goes on in this world. He isn't an inactive God. If you are in sin, He knows. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 says God chose us in Christ to be holy and blameless. John 6 verse 44 says God draws us to Himself. Psalm 121 verse 4 says God sees everything that happens in our lives and watches over us day and night. Psalm 34 verse 15 The eye of the Lord is on those who fear Him. What are these verses telling us? It shows us that God is always with us and watching us. He's there to encourage us and uplift us. He draws us near to himself because he loves us. He knows when we need him and he knows when we are struggling. God is our father and he wants us to call on him when we need him. This means when we are weak, we call on the name of Jesus. This means when we are struggling, we flee the temptation and run into his arms. We have the victory over the flesh in the mighty name of Jesus. Learn scripture that you can quote over your situation when you find yourself in lust or sexual sin. I promise you the mood will die very quickly when you start quoting scripture to your boyfriend or girlfriend in a moment of lust. James 5 verse 16 therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. If you are in sexual sin, admit it to someone you trust that can hold you accountable. You may not have a relationship with your pastor that you feel comfortable enough to confess your sexual sin to him. But find someone that you can trust that won't make excuses for you, but will have grace. The whole point of confessing sin to someone is that they can hold you accountable to make sure it doesn't keep happening. By doing so, they can lift you up in prayer and put resources into your hands that can help prevent these sins from happening again. You don't have to battle this alone. You can build a community of believers around you that help you be an overcomer in Christ Jesus.
What are you telling yourself? Are you telling yourself that you're a sinner that can't beat this? Speak life over yourself. Speak victory in the name of Jesus. You don't have to fall victim to the sin time and time again. The third way to overcome sexual sin is to be aware of your future and where it leads you. Romans 6 verse 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Make no mistake about it, my friend. Sexual sin leads to death. There is no way around it. If you are having sex or masturbating, you will go to hell. The devil is trying to conquer you with this sin. If you look at music videos or movies these days, everything is sexualized. Not only is it overly sexualized, but it's demonic as well. Everything is perverse and causes confusion. The things that society is trying to normalize go directly against what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 says, Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals will enter the kingdom. The world wants you to think that it's okay to be your version of truth. If God created you to be a man, you are a man. If God created you to be a woman, you are a woman. A man cannot change genders to a woman and have a baby, therefore this is an abomination. This doesn't mean that you can go around and have sex with the same gender. It is between a man and a woman, regardless of what the world says about truth. If you participate in same-sex relationships, this leads to hell. Mark 10 verses 6 through 12 says, But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. God made marriage between a man and a woman. It is by this relationship that we procreate. You cannot create a baby with your same sex, it's biologically impossible. Now listen to me very closely, my friends. If you drive your car into the mud and it gets dirty, what do you have? Is your car no longer worthy to be driven? Do you throw your car out and get a new one? No. That would be absurd, wouldn't it? You wash your car and it is like new again. That's what happens with the blood of Jesus with our sexual sin. You don't have to be destined to go to hell, but simply accept what Jesus did on the cross and be forgiven of your sexual sin. Repent and turn away from it. God is mighty to save, and he wants all of his children to go to heaven. What Jesus did on the cross was the atonement for all sin once and for all. If you've accepted Jesus into your life, then you are saved. And as you are transformed by the Holy Spirit and reading the Bible, the desire to sin decreases because the Holy Spirit increases inside you. I'm not saying this is a magic pill. But what I'm saying is, you'll have an advocate sent to you by the Father that helps you abide in his ways. It gets much easier if you don't have to do this alone. I know you're tired of feeling the shame and guilt that comes from condemnation of the devil over your sin. The devil isn't your friend. If he's telling you, it's good, it isn't. The devil doesn't give you gifts. You can sell your soul to him and acquire all the riches and everything your heart desires, but it comes with a price. You won't be able to enjoy any of it. You can watch porn and masturbate all you want, but the promise that it will fulfill you is a lie from the devil. After you're done, you're full of shame and guilt, telling yourself that you won't do it again. Until the next time when you're alone, up late at night, and the urge strikes again. You cannot have victory over this on your own. Why wait any longer to beat this once and for all? All you have to do is ask Jesus to come into your life and forgive you of your sins and change you forever. It's that simple. Accept what he did on the cross for you, believe it in your heart, confess with your mouth, repent of your sin, and turn away from it, and you will be saved. You can have the victory over this sin. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. I know that I've been struggling with this sin for far too long. Instead of fleeing like the Bible tells me to, I try to white-knuckle it and grit my teeth through the desires of the flesh. I entertain the lust instead of running away from it. I watch things that arouse me instead of turning the screen off when I see nudity. I watch things with provocative women that lead me to desire them instead of watching things that are holy. I listen to music that entertains and glorifies the sex life instead of listening to worship music that glorifies your name. Forgive me of these sins, Lord. Holy Spirit, guide me and convict me when I watch and listen to things that I'm not supposed to. Put people in my life that have the same values that I have. When it comes to dating, 
Help me to find someone whose beliefs align with mine so we can both know what the Word of God says. This will help us be united in Christ and minimize the opportunity or desire to have sex. I know that I'm not perfect, Lord, but you are. That's why I'm calling on your name, Jesus. Help me to overcome sexual sin and lust. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and all of my relationships and friendships. In you, Jesus, I'm more than a conqueror because I get my strength from you. Thank you for your sacrifice on the cross, Jesus. Help me to show you that I appreciate what you've done by helping me not sin anymore. And if I do sin, help me to repent immediately. It's in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. If this video has encouraged you or given you hope for the season you find yourself in, leave the video with a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and share this content with someone struggling with sexual sin currently. You don't have to fight the battle alone. See you in the next video. God bless.